Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of the Ask a Muso podcast. I'm stoked to have uh, MKC on the other end of the line today and um, we're going to be having a chat about all things music and uh, to do with what he's up to at the moment. So I'll pass over to you, Matt. Um, tell us a bit about yourself and what you're up to. Thanks, Bailey. Um, thanks for having me on. Um, yeah, Matt, MKC is the uh, the artist name. But um, yeah, look, to be honest with you now, I mean, I've, I've always been in production, um, songwriting, that kind of thing. I'm in the, you know, the, the pop commercial space. Um, been doing a lot of work for local hip hop artists, which is obviously how you and I came together um, to know each other. So we're pretty fortunate to be in that circle, meet a lot of good people. But um, yeah, just keep busy with music, man. Fantastic. So I'll start sort of from the beginning, as far back as you want to go. Where did um, did music start or music production start? Or what was your first sort of entrance into the industry in any sort of form? So my whole family are musicians, dude. So I started out um in the classical side of things so my entire family are opera singers so i was doing massive performances and you know uh, around the country that kind of thing probably since i you know can walk uh, so i'm pretty lucky in that sense and then i just kind of stemmed away from that started playing guitar teaching myself um got a got a teacher as well for that which was awesome and then just got into songwriting dude and i was in bands you know when i was maybe 10 years ago um got to play some awesome shows with some massive artists international artists which was pretty awesome um, and then from there, just kind of got into doing my own thing. I studied audio engineering for a little bit um, when I finished school. So that was awesome as well. I did that at Box Hill. Um, so audio engineering. And then from there, I just started to, I suppose, try and find my niche a little bit. Um, I was doing a lot of my own production and trying to outsource a little bit of work as well um, for other people. So from vocal production right through to uh, EDM music. Uh, and then that kind of, yeah, stemmed into the... You know where I am today so yeah okay so fantastic so your own stuff how would you classify that on a genre sense to those who haven't heard it before probably a combination of a little bit of um you got it's pretty pop like the, my vocals and everything a pretty pop production is as well but then you you know I'm thinking artists like Chainsmokers, Kygo, um, Makita, um, Cash Cash artists like that and then I don't sometimes I like to take a little bit more chill just depending you know like anyone what is you know how you're feeling in the moment so sometimes you want to write something that's you know up and about summary and then sometimes you're feeling something a bit more chill and and you want to just you know tell the story so uh, I think that goes for any genre but that that's probably how I, I, I categorize it um, but yeah I mean it's probably just easy listening music and I mean hopefully you've heard some of it so you know you can you can have your own spin on what you think of it as well but yeah yeah, no, I, I'm definitely uh, all over the tracks, and I suppose that leads me to wanting to ask about Echo, um, uh, your latest release to date. Um, that was sort of, well, when things were really kicking off with this virus stuff, and and sort of from there, you you had this, and I, I had to listen to it, and um, that sort of ticks all the boxes of what you just said, regards to the easy listening and stuff like that. Where does where does that come from? Where's what's what's that song about? That was really, you know, I wanted to tell a story um, about someone that was in my life at the time, maybe about four or five years ago. Um, and, you know, it, things ended really badly and didn't really know the person and, and what they were trying to achieve from being with me. Um, and, you know, everyone falls into the trap of, you know, being kind of led along. And and it was really just about, you know, that kind of always sitting in the back of my mind. It was just always echoing like it, it kind of led me to what I wanted to find in the next person I was with. Um, so I wanted to tell a bit of a story, you know, about he, he meets her, she meets him. Um, and the different perspectives of what it's like for each person when they first lay eyes on that person and, and the effect that they have on them. Um, and I was really fortunate because um, I had Rachel Costanza, who was you know, a massive artist, uh, feature on it with me, which was really cool. Um, and yeah, that led to a pitch with High Rain Music, um, who distribute through Sony Music Canada. So they picked it up and um, yeah, released. But as you said, COVID kind of got in the way of all of that. Uh, which was a bit of a, a bit of a bummer, but nonetheless, you know, it's out there, it's still kicking along, and um, yeah, it's looking forward to what's next as well. Yeah, awesome. So, so I'll, I'll take a, I'll get back to what what's sort of happening next um, in a sec, but I wanna, um, I wanna talk about uh, you and me and the elephant in the room. So, mythic jets, all that sort of vibe. How did that happen for you? Like, w- how did you meet him, and how did you guys get connected? So I've been pretty fortunate, you know, to, to reflect now, um, you know, he's one of my closest friends, uh, which has probably come about around um, the fact that, you know, so heavily through music uh, and my appreciation for hip hop, uh, you know, what he adds to, to that genre and, and locally in the community. So I, um, I'd seen Dean floating around social media. Um, at the time I was, 
I was doing um, a lot of DJing for 21sts and 18ths and that kind of thing. I mean, he'd been to a few of these events and seen me DJing, so it's a long time ago now. And um, I've been seeing his music pop up and he'd done a, a fantastic song um, with Marvel at the time. Uh, Marvel had, had produced a film clip for it and I watched it. I was like, gee, this kid has got some serious talent behind him. And I just asked him for his number, gave him a call and said, look, man, you know, we've got to work together. I can see heaps of potential in you. You know, I want to help you drive that and I want to help you try and mould into, you know, the artist that he's, um, you know, really evolving into constantly. So that was really how we picked it up. He came to the studio of um, Aeroplanes um, by B.O.B. And uh, yeah, with, with Taylor's friend, uh, Taylor Jones. And that was really cool. And from there, we just kicked off into his Storm EP. Um, and yeah, everything evolved from there. So it was, it was a pretty fun journey. It's probably been two or three years now that that's been happening. So yeah. Wow, not as long as I thought, actually. Like, um, not as long as I thought, because I uh, connected with him through uni and stuff like that, and in the scheme of things, that's not my longer, uh, or not my shorter, sorry, down the track myself. Um, but yeah, like, it's always just been sort of that connection that I've always had with you guys and that, um, that community and stuff like that, and I've, I froth being a part of that and being invited into that, and that was a very comforting, very, um, uh, like, really, really genuine group of people. Um, and then to come... Yeah, and then to come down um, at the end, oh, sorry, the beginning of the year um, before we knew what was actually going on and stuff like that, um, it was nice to have that and to have that performance. Even though none of us knew it was going to be our last one for a while, it was nice to, uh, to to play and to have an awesome night like we did for his birthday and for the EP launch, and that was just a sick night. In regards to uh, what you've got up next, um, the releases and things you want to talk about that you got upcoming or... Yeah, I've got a, a new single um, that I finished, or two new singles that I finished. Um, one's called Upside Down. And I was really fortunate to work with a, a Swedish producer named I'm Simon. He's massive. Check him out on Spotify. He's awesome. Um, so he co-produced it with me, which is pretty cool. Um, I haven't really um, you know, gone too heavily into the whole co-production piece of, of my music. I thought, you know, it's time to branch out. Um, the more personalities, the better, right, when it comes to the production. So... I've used a lot of people for outsourcing for mixing and that kind of thing, but I thought, no, I'm going to, I'm going to, you know, um, get a bit of a team behind this one. So he did that. Uh, I'm just in the process of, of working through a music video this month um, for that and then gearing up for the release of that and, and pitching it to the labels that I want to. So other than that, I've got another single in the works, which is done um, here to the moment. I was really fortunate to work with Khalid's mix engineer on that. And he did some co-production, which was super exciting uh, so both of those are ready to go, man. So it's really just going to be planning um, and campaigning for those over the next couple of months for me. And um, yeah, just continuing with writing production and uh, yeah, seeing what, what comes as, you know, the world starts to open up a bit more and we could do a bit more. So it's exciting. Absolutely. It's honestly um, the most exciting time to have, uh, like when I walk out the beach and stuff like that and I see, you know, every man and his dog and just half the sunny coast out in Mulbar Beach and stuff like that. It's like everyone's really thrived to the occasion of we can't or we, sorry, we couldn't do something and now that we, now that it's been taken away from us, we're not, we're not, hiding, we're not holding back. We're thriving. We're saying, yeah, now we've got a chance and it's a really good thing for people like yourself that um, we're doing things anyway. You haven't just started. Like with my band, Total Radio Science, we were just starting to sort of build a following. So it sort of nipped us in the bud. But now we're all at sort of level one again. And as we come out of this, it's it's about who wants to put themselves out there the best and the quickest and who's got whatever prepared. And, and we did that with releases and video clips and stuff. So so regarding to your production stuff, um, on a, on a video side of things, you've done quite a few video clip stuff with Mythic and things like that. What sort of... um. So how, how did you get into that side of things rather than the music? Yeah, um, the videography thing for me was I'd worked with some really uh, amazing um, music video producers over the last probably five, six years, um, which was super exciting. But at the same time, it's, it's a massive expense and a lot of artists would know that um, if, if they've been down that, that, that road. So unless you're in a band or something, it's really hard to carry the weight of these costs when you're a solo artist. Um, and, you know, I wanted to do, you know, I, I knew that, I was starting to do a lot of hip hop work and I thought, well, you know, these, these guys are, are not potentially, you know, earning a lot of money. They need to be able to deliver something on a, on a budget effectively, but I wanted to deliver something for them that was high quality as well. Um, that worked to both of us and, you know, uh, gave me a good reputation, but also, you know, help them to, to be able to have something that was really tangible to, to put out there to social media. So I literally went out, I bought the camera gear and I just taught myself everything. Um, so I, you know, I've been pretty fortunate. So I use, um, I use some Sony gear. So I use a, a Sony a 6500 with a Zion crane and I just taught myself how to use, 
uh, DaVinci Resolve. So pretty much the run of it. And yeah, Mythic was, I suppose, my, um, my you know, my, my little prodigy that I could, you know, I could, I could test out on um, and, and try and do some things for. So I was, I was really lucky to, you know, be able to be a part of his projects and um, yeah, you know, I've been doing his music videos for him ever since. And we work really well together. You know, I, I get what he's wanting to achieve. He understands what I'm, you know, wanting to do and the shots that I'm trying to take. And we just collaborate so effectively to, to deliver a really good result. So. Yeah. And that's so important. I, um, I think the best thing I got out of the uni sphere, um, other than Dean personally, was the idea of collaborating and how much I enjoy that as opposed to just hanging out and doing my own stuff. Like I, um, in the works have, um, well, it, it'll be, it'll be out by the time this is out. Um, uh, like a remaster, full remix remaster of basically my most, um, personal storytelling songs that I put together like all the way from year 12 to um, like uni time and it was low quality, low fi low budget and I redid it, I redid it, it's got a little bit more energy, um, m- more clarity, things like that and then I hit Monty up and said, hey, do you want to play guitar solo on this because I'm not much of a player and you can make it sound better and it just automatically makes me like it more um, because of the fact that I've included someone else in it. And, and I went out, um, uh, when I did my, my drum cover for Reptilia, I recorded some other things and I recorded some drums outside on the lake, um, for, so it was a video clip as well. So I uh, collaborated with dad and stuff like that and other people to, to try and get another music video. And Monty and I are working on a music video, um, over, over the internet. So he's, he's filming all these parts and sending them across. So I, I've enjoyed collaborating more than anything I've ever done by myself. Like even like it's a different thing to bands. Like I enjoy bands, but the collaborating side of things of someone saying, "I would love to join in on what you're doing." It's it's a really wholesome feeling. I, I love it. Yeah, exactly, man. Um, you know, and and you're right. The collaboration piece is is a massive thing. I think that was um you know just just touching on what you'd said about the videography side of things. I think that was one of the, the, the earlier projects that I I did was you know collaboration with with Mythic with Dean, um, but better by Khalid. And we just we just stripped it back, and we you know we added in some rap verses, something that the song never had, reproduced it, um, and you know just just meshed a couple of genres, that, you know, and just took the you know the pop element of the song, and then just blended it with this, this Aussie hip hop, and it just came out so so beautifully, and it told such a great story, um, and that's exactly right. Like you know I'd never be able to do something like that on my own. And it's as you said, you you got to collaborate and um, take your ideas from ninety or hundred percent and just turn them right up when you have someone else jump on a song with you. So it makes a huge difference, you know, to have more people involved for sure. Yeah. And I even um, like I sort of started with the idea of this, I try and find people that can do um, what I can't do. And then it was sort of find people that can do um, what I can do, but they can do it better. And then now it's like, I just, just released a drum cover with someone else that plays drums and we did it together and we did a dual drum cover. Like now it's sort of like people are people. If I enjoy you and I love what you're about, then let's just do something. Let's find a way to make it work. And I've loved seeing that growth with you and how like the cypher that you guys did, um, with, with all of them and things like that. And like, I'm no rapper, but I have really got into Australian hip hop, um, as a result of that whole connection and being a part of that. Um, and yeah, and it's just awesome to see what, what you guys have created together and what, and what you're creating for yourself. Um, it's really, really positive. So in regards to like the music that you sort of listen to, do you listen to the sort of stuff you make or is it Oz hip hop or is it a bit of both or is it completely something else? Yeah, it's a good question. I, I listen to, to a lot of different genres, to be honest with you, man. Um, a lot of pop. Um, yeah, there's, there's quite a bit of hip hop. Um, I don't really listen to a lot of Aussie hip hop, to be honest. I, I do from the earlier days, like your, your horror shows and, and artists like that. But um, for me, to be honest with you, I, like, I'll, I listen to a lot of like, country music, American country music and that kind of thing, because it's, it's kind of moving into the pop space anyway. Um, so that, that's a big one for me. But, um, you know, any song that is good, you know, I've got, I listen to a lot of 80s rock and roll, um, you know, like the glam pop, that kind of thing as well, like a massive Bon Jovi fan. Um, Skid Row, they, these old artists that um, you know, people don't think of, or like you know um, Bruce Springsteen, Brian, Brian Adams, these kind of people, um, they're massive influences for me, and they might not necessarily come out in, in my in my work specifically, but it might just be you know chord progression structures, or or you know the way that um, melodies are delivered over particular chord structures, and little things like that that you pick up on from different genres. Um, so yeah, I mean I listen to a lot of different stuff then, but uh, yeah, I probably wouldn't. I suppose pigeonhole myself to say, you know, I just listen to this or just listen to that because I don't feel like you ever grow as an artist either. You've got to really be able to, you know, expand on what you, what you know, what your safe zone is and kind of 
jump into something outside of your comfort zone that you normally wouldn't look at. And I feel like that makes a massive difference into, you know, making sure you're always growing as an artist. So. Yeah. And that way you can take the bits you like um, and the bits that are relevant to you. And I, I've adopted lots of, um, uh, lots of ideas that I like from uh, like th- some of the Bliss Nesso drum breaks. I really rate them. And Total Radio Science is nothing like Australian hip hop. And yet I can find a way to incorporate that or the speed or the feel or something like that. And I've really enjoyed um, that. Um, that's been really fun for me. And with everything like that in mind, I have sort of tried to um, mold what I personally think into whatever group I'm in and like it's sort of like a challenge for me um and I think that's just that's such an important skill to have because like you you can't say oh I just do or play or listen to x because um people leave you behind because it's not it's like I listen to lots of different things so like you you're not as cultured in some respects because you don't have that that other view of how things could sound or what things could be like yeah I mean and that's the thing you're Right, because you know every genre is going to bring something new to it all the time. I need to listen to these things because, um, you know, there are there are common themes in these genres, but you know a lot of them cross over, and you can pick up a lot of things from another genre, add it to yours, and that's that's really how it always changes, right? Like it's just, you know, getting influence from these these people that you normally wouldn't, and that's how something new is created. So um, you're definitely right on that. Yeah, yeah, and it's it is. Yeah, it's just I think the way times are now. It's like people don't um don't even want to lock themselves into like a genre. They don't want to be one or the other. They just want to they want to try put their hands and, and thumbs in as many pies as possible. And that's why I've enjoyed getting into the hip hop thing and playing pop stuff. And um you know you 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 don't have to ask once if you want to be to play on something of your own. Yeah, you don't have to you don't have to ask nicely. Um, especially right now when I'm I'm happy to as you can see this is what I this is where I do my thing and um yeah so I, I I'm enjoying that and I'm. I'm always open for, for collaboration suggestions of any nature. I'll make it work somehow. 100%, that'd be awesome. And we can, we can take that offline. We can talk about that. <laughs> yes, I think we should definitely do that. I think we should definitely do that. Um, but before we wrap up, I just want to know what um, what do you want to plug, like your socials and all that? Like where can people find you? I'll put up your album artwork for Echo and anything else you want me to you want me to work on. And um, yeah, what are you up to? Tell me, tell me. Sure, man, I appreciate it. Um, Instagram, MKC Music. Uh, it's probably the best place to get in touch because you can get the rest of the social social straight out of the link from there um to spotify everything like that um but you know really i just want to i suppose give a shout out to pretty much any local artist at the moment because it is is really a tough time um and you know people out there really trying to keep the creativity going you know in a world that's you know, really challenging this year um and for a lot of people it's been a you know a really trying time so for anyone that's you know releasing new music i know that jinx has just dropped the new album which is fantastic for listening for that um, and obviously, uh, Mythic, he, he's got some incredible work going at the moment that's about to come out. Um, and yeah, really anybody else that, that's, that's doing it tough and, and just trying to get their music out, they just keep going because the reality is, um, you know, the world's, you know, always going to be, be there tomorrow. So we're just going to keep, keep trying to go on and, and just try and support each other. And that's all we can really do. Right. So. Absolutely. And everyone's always going to want someone to listen to and, and or, or something to watch, uh, and that's that's just the joy of entertainment. You you got to make sure that um, you keep entertainment uh, free and available for everyone in a, in a in a space that they can consume because um, it really does mean a lot to some people. You know, one day it could just be easy listening, and the other day it could be the one thing that gets you through the day. So it's really important that um there's no there's no timeline, there's no deadline on things like this. Um, it's just about working on what you can, and hopefully everyone that um, has used their time. Um, I know a lot of people that um, certainly have used their time. Uh, quite convincingly uh, during this period to make sure that they've got um, as much as they can coming out the other side. And we had a couple of songs come out, a couple of video clips and stuff. So it's just about doing what you can and, um, and enjoying it because in the scheme of things, um, this, having uh, something like this that's fun and enjoyable and harmless um, puts us at quite an advantage over other people that maybe don't have a hustle like we do. You're right, 100%. Yeah, awesome. Well, thank you so much for having a chat with me. We'll definitely, um, we'll definitely reconvene over um, a collaboration down down the track in the works because that would be awesome fun. No, thanks for having me, Bailey. Appreciate it, man. So that's another episode of the Ask a Muso podcast. I've had a pleasure chatting to MKC on the other end of the line today, and uh, I got one more episode coming up for this series um, next week on Tuesday, same time. So if you don't want to miss that one, hit the subscribe and hit the bell too. And until next time, I will see you next week. Yeah.